Hi, I'm Jim Runner. I'm here at Philadelphia's Adrian Theatre, where on April 10th, Interact Theatre Company will open their production of Yusef El Gwindi's Jihad Jones and the Kalashnikov Babes. To my left are Interact's artistic director, Seth Rosen, Fajr al Kaizi, who plays the lead character Ashraf in the play, and the playwright, Yusef El Gwindi. Seth, could you start by giving us a brief synopsis of the play? Sure. It's a, a very funny play that takes a, a different take on the sort of familiar Hollywood setup. It's an actor and an agent. The agent is offering uh, this uh, an actor of Middle Eastern descent uh, a role in a blockbuster blockbuster Hollywood film, and uh, the film is uh, about a family, an American family, that is being invaded by a group of horrible Arab terrorists. And so the actor is being asked to play this horribly stereotypical role, and the play sort of follows his slippery slope as he deals with the conflict about whether to take this role with uh, a great director or opera city's favorite starlet for a huge amount of money, or to uh, say no because he, you know, he doesn't want to shame himself or his family and his entire community by doing this horrible role. Although it's a comedy, it tackles controversial issues, and from what I understand, even your marketing materials have generated some controversy in anticipation of the opening date. Apparently, you had designed a poster that was deemed too offensive for public display. Now, what did you want to achieve with the original poster, and what do you think this initial controversy says about the environment in which you're about to open this piece? Just like I direct a show, what we try to do with our marketing is to capture the spirit of the play and to use that as a way to sell it. And the spirit of the play is to kind of go over the top in the way these stereotypes are sometimes uh, portrayed in Hollywood and so forth. And so we went whole hog with the image and uh, we actually had uh, Phaedra, our lead actor, in the photo shoot and I had actually talked to Yusef, the playwright, about the idea for the image and everybody was on board so I, we, we checked that out first. Figured if they're on board with it, we're pretty much in, in safe territory. And, um, and our designers with our marketing director came up with a design that we thought was, it captured the spirit of the play, made it clear that it was over the top. I don't think anyone could not get that. Yeah. <laughs> but I do think that uh, the, any private agency, whether, you know, whoever it is, has the right to decide whether or not they support something. And I think what happens sometimes is that people are concerned on behalf of other people that there might be some offense, and they just would rather, you know, not, not be at the center of that. Now, Phaedra, you actually appear in this poster dressed in a kaifa, holding a machine gun, as stealth bombers fly over a Middle Eastern village. Have you ever had to play any roles that required you to dress and act like this? It's embarrassing to say, but yes. <laughs> uh, you know, pay the bills. It's, it's a screen role. It was an industrial, and uh, yeah. How did you handle any moral dilemmas that you might have associated with portraying such a role? Let me just preface this by saying I'm not as principled as the character hero. I don't... I don't really, I, I care in the long view, but I also, uh, I have my plan and my goals and my thing, and I understand that we're going to have to wade through some garbage before we get to, you know, yeah. so-called promised land. And I should film. say that when I auditioned Phaedra along with the other, uh, I don't know, 15 or 20 actors in New York to find uh, the right person for this role, um, Pretty much every person who came in with the monologue that, that they happened to play this is said, my life. this is my life. <laughs> I, I so know this feeling. Let me contrast what you've described with Lebanese-American actor Tony Shalhoub, who in his first TV role played a terrorist on the television series The Equalizer. Now he stars in Monk, his own show on USA Network. And while he said that one terrorist role was enough for him, couldn't young actors just see these roles as a stepping stone and view Shalhoub's career more as a model they should try and pursue rather than hold themselves to idealistic principles? Sure, I, mean, I think that's I think that's justification for uh, um, you know for you accepting the industrial or mm -hmm. another actor who might take on you know one of these um, pretty stereotypical uh, roles as well. You know, uh, I'll do this. I'll get to meet people, my image will be out there, who knows, it might lead to something else. And I think that's the justification for doing that. I mean, I don't think an actor will look at this and go, oh, wow, this is a fantastic part. I mean, I could really sink my you know, teeth into this and express, uh, you know, I think they look at this and go, crap, this is junk. But, you know, um, better you know, I do this junk than some Indian guy. Uh, well, so that it might lead to 
uh, something else. It might, you know, through networking and all that. Or the other issue is it's not just that the, these roles are there, that they're, that they're in films that are being made, it's that there aren't enough other roles. Sure. In other words, the, 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 I think the real argument that, that Ashraf makes in the play, that Youssef makes in, in, by writing the, this play, is that there's too, too often this is the only image that uh, American audiences, whether it's film audiences or theater audiences, see. Right. And if, if we saw the full range, yes. or a fuller range, right. of Arab American characters and Arab characters, yeah. then, then seeing an occasional terrorist who may be as crazy and fanatical as, as the character in the, in the movie that they're making in the play, yeah. it wouldn't be so bad. The problem is that's, that's all we see. Right. So what it does is it fuels the same thing. I think that's the gripe of a lot of different groups. It's, yeah, I mean, of course there are bad guys within a, a, any uh, group, uh, ethnicity, uh, uh, and uh, it's, 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 a, it's a question of, fine, we, there, there, there are bad guys, but they show the full spectrum, you know, right. give, us, give us another image, yeah. uh, you know, why do the stories always have to be negative? The Asian problem Americans. is that right now, not only is, is it, does it happen to be people of Middle Eastern descent, but it's also that the specific way they're being portrayed as, is as American killers. <laughs> And so it's one thing that it's mobsters or alcoholics or yeah. whatever it is uh, that are that are that's a stereotype. But this is something that is directly harmful. That it, it's projecting the idea that you have to be afraid of these people, right. which I think is why it's so hard to to stomach. We're almost a decade removed from 9/11. Now let's imagine that in the decade following World War II, the very few Asian American actors in Hollywood refused to do any roles associated with the Japanese atrocities during World War II. We would have lost movies like Bridge Over the River Kwai, for example. Don't you think that art has a duty to reflect reality, no matter how offensive and irregardless of the consequences? First of all, this this uh, this negativity um, directed towards um, you know Arabs and, and Muslims it, it's not it's not something that happened after. I mean, it became more concentrated and focused. And you know, it, it, this was around pre 9 11. Started this in was, the 80s. This was even pre Gulf War. This has kind of been around for a thousand years or so. Um, <laughs> you know, this antipathy is very much part of uh, uh, the Western uh, narrative in terms of how it regards the East, the Middle East, Arabs, and Muslims. So it's not just, an, it's not just a phenomenon. This kind of uh, brought it to a boil. In part, it, it goes back to, it's not a question of making a film about evil terrorists. In fact, it will also make a film about, the, you know, showing another aspect of, um, showing another uh, uh, dimension of Arabs and Muslims that, you know. I think that's something that's happened in our lifetime is that the, our, America, at least, has grown uh, more diverse, grown more PC, yeah. uh, grown more accepting of, of more, a wider range of stories, but still, there's lots of stories that, are, that go untold. Yes. Tons of stories. That and go lots of stories coming that we're yeah. going to need in order to understand what's happening or what's happened in the last five or six years. The Iraq War, there are no movies about it right now. But I mean, like Vietnam War took 10 or 15 years before the first movie came out about it. But I can tell you, we've been inundated with Iraq War plays, and they're all the same. They all not all the same quality, but well, they're yeah. all the same. They all take the same basic sentiments. Well, so almost every play has the the Iraqi or Middle Eastern characters being noble and good, period, and pure victims. I'm not saying these aren't true, but I'm just saying that this is that the soldiers are good people who are doing bad things and who are haunted by the bad things they've done, and that the bad people in these movies are almost always the the unseen U.S. government. Uh, or the people who are making this stuff happen, and uh, again, it's a limited view. It's one. It's still one story, and a lot of people writing the same story. Why aren't we seeing the more complex, yeah. more nuanced? I think it's. Stories. I think the, the, the this play is a call to you know stop living in the extremes. We don't need to live in like the one end or the other. There's a lot of stuff in the middle, and I think that's that's what I kind of walked away reading it the first time, mm -hmm. and I hope that there's more. Again, thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. Jihad Jones and the Kalishnikov Babe runs at Interact Theatre Company from April 10th until May 10th at the Adrian Theatre in Philadelphia.